I'd like to introduce our chairperson, who is uh, Hella Mufidra. Hello, um, nice to see so many of you here today. So as Jamie said, and thanks Jamie for organising this session, um, we um, are joining you from FIDRA in Scotland. So we're the organisation behind the Great Myrtle Hunt. And um, that's how I know our speakers today. So it's fantastic that we've got Carolina and Jade with us. And, um, if you uh, have any questions, please do feel free to put them in the chat or ask them at the Q&A. Um, we do want this to be as interactive as possible. So please do get involved. Um, our first speaker today is going to be Jade Malone, who works um, for a UK lottery charity and has worked with a number of different NGOs. And I'm Jade because she did an hurdle hunt with me about a year ago now, and since then has been helping FIDRA with our social media. And I thought um, some of her wisdom could be fantastic to pass on um, to you all as well. Um, we're also really lucky to have um, Carolina uh, from Sea Shepherd in Australia. And if you've been on social media and looked at Nerdles, you'll have probably come across some posts that Carolina has done. So it's fantastic that she can join us all the way from Australia and in her uh, late afternoon there. And um, it's great to have some real life examples of how you can use social media in, in your work as an NGO. So I'll pass over to um, Jade just now and uh, we'll have about 20 minutes from her, then we'll have um, a chat from Carolina and then we'll all come back together to have a discussion and Q&A at that point. So um, Jade, over to you. Hello everyone, uh, let me just share my screen here and get my presentation up. Um, so yeah, as uh, Heather said, oh wait, can you see my screen now? Oh. Let me take yeah. that as yeah. a yes. <laughs> Good. Yeah. Good. Uh, here we go. So, uh, can you see? Yeah, just the presentation. Cool. Uh, so, as Heather said, my name is Jade, and I'm a social media officer at People's Postcode Lottery, which is based in Great Britain. And we raise money for lots of different charities. And I've had the opportunity to work with lots of great charities and NGOs. Uh, to help them with their campaigns and to help raise awareness of all the amazing things that these charities do um, and the, the, the charities that our customers support as well. So I've worked with charities like Greenpeace, WWF, London Zoo, the National Trust, and together we all come up with ideas to share really inspiring stories with our customers. And as Heather said, I did do a Nerdle Hunt last year. So here's me and my team from Postcode Lottery. Uh, we're in the comms team. There's me second from the left there. Um, so we did that at North Berwick Beach, where Bidra are based, um, to help you know, collect vital data about this global plastic issue. Um, so when we did it, we got quite competitive and we ended up finding hundreds of these little pellets. And I have to admit it was something that I wasn't aware of at the time. I didn't know much about this issue, uh, but now I think about it every time I go to my local beach. I'm not too far from one, and I've been telling all of my friends about Nerdles. I've become obsessed. Like Heather says, I help you guys with your social media because I want to learn more, and I think more people could learn about this and get involved. Um, so there's definitely potential here for many more people to take part in this Nerdle Hunt across the world. And I'm sure that you can all inspire people like myself to get involved. So social media is a really valuable tool to help organize campaigns and spread information. And you'll see that on social media, climate callouts are on the rise, especially with younger generations who are being heavily invested in using their platforms to get involved in climate action and social action. So from holding digital climate strikes to translating information about climate change into different languages, social media can help you spread awareness and organizations do use social media in different ways to achieve their goals. So for example, uh, there's Greenpeace who I've worked with. They use social media in a really great way. Uh, they use it to raise awareness about different environmental issues, including climate change, deforestation, ocean conservation, um, but they also use social media, such as Twitter, Facebook and Instagram, to share good news and updates and funny memes, which people really appreciate and get involved in. But they're also really good with engaging with their followers and encouraging people to get involved as well. So 
what can social media do for your organization? Well, we know, all know it's really, really important, but it's really easy to underestimate how powerful a tool social media can really be for you. Um, it allows organizations, especially those with limited budgets, to reach a really great audience in a fast and cost-effective cost way. With the right social media strategy in place, you can reach thousands, maybe millions of people with your posts. It gives you and organizations like yours a chance to share your stories. The posts that you share can engage followers and even find new ones. Um, so your content can increase awareness, encourage volunteers, inspire social action. So the possibilities are just endless. And the more you take advantage of the benefits of social media, the easier it can be to reach your goals. And the more goals you achieve, the greater good that you can do for your cause. So uh, I hope this doesn't look too confusing for you, but I, it's just here to get you to think about what you actually want to achieve with your social media channels. Um, so it's one of the first things that you should consider. Uh, do you want to encourage more people to take part in the Nerdle hunt? Or do you want to educate people about Nerdles? Um, or do you want to lobby local governments to make positive changes for the environment and our oceans? Once you have your objective in mind, you can now think of the actions that you want to take to achieve your goals and what social media channels will be best suited for you to achieve them. So do you keep that in mind? It's not necessary to be on every single social media channel because I know that can be overwhelming, so you don't have to be on all of them. But do think of ones that, that are best suited to you and that will help you reach your goals and make the best impact possible. So, for example, if you're targeting young people uh, to get involved in their own nerdle hunts, maybe Instagram or TikTok will be better for you. But if you are wanting to make connections with local politicians or other organisations, maybe Twitter or LinkedIn are better for you. So that's something that you should consider. Once you have your channels in mind, you should also keep track of your KPIs or your key performance indicators so that you can keep track of what is working well for you in your posts and so you can replicate your successes in future. So for example, if your goal was to spread awareness, which is at this first stage here, then you want to be keeping an eye on reach or the amount of uh, accounts your posts has reached. If you want to keep an eye on um, your conversions, so how many people are signing up, keep an eye on link clicks to the website or the sign up website for the Nerdle Hunt. Um, so I'm going to quickly go through the main social media channels and my top tips for each one, just really quickly. Um, so first of all, we have Facebook, which I understand quite a lot of you have an uh, account with Facebook. Uh, so think of Facebook as your community where you can talk to and engage with your followers, followers and other organizations. Its main types of content is copy images and videos. And it's best practice to get into the habit of including good quality visuals with every post as these get way more interactions than just copy alone. So for an even bigger boost in engagement, ask questions to form a deeper level of engagement. So the more engagement you get, the more your post is going to be seen by people. And here are quite some quick tips for you. So I suggest that you get into the habit of posting regularly. Once a week should be a minimum. Every day is good practice, but I know that's not always feasible, especially with NGOs with limited staff. Um, but it is good to, uh, to get into the habit of doing it regularly as you will look more reliable and authentic. Because if you think about it, how much faith do you put into an organization that never updates their social media pages? So make sure that you do have a presence on there if you've got an account. But don't post too often because people will get sick of you. Trust me, I know. I think I've spammed a lot of people here. So try and experiment. Each, each of your organizations will be completely different. So just keep testing what works for you and keep doing that. Um, next, well, yeah, review what's working. As I said, just constantly check on stats to regularly find out what's getting traction and learn from your successes and failures. Next, build your networks. It's worthwhile connecting with similar organizations such as yourself. Maybe you can all add each other on your social medias after today. Um, and don't be afraid to ask your followers questions and talk to them. It's a really good tool for having comments and threads under each post, so make use of that. Um, so make sure you're always monitoring and responding. So uh, you'll get your responses in the notifications tab at the top of our Facebook page. Um, 
you don't have to respond to everything, but it is always really good to monitor what's going on there and getting in touch with people when you can. Next up, we have Twitter. Uh, think of it like a newspaper because its main content is mostly news and updates. Um, it's a great place to share updates, news, insights, uh, and content with a huge audience by utilizing the right hashtags and keywords. My quick tips for Twitter, keep it short. It's best to keep every tweet really focused on one specific message rather than trying to communicate lots of different ideas in one go. Um, add visuals where you can, um, especially video, as they can add a lot of value, especially if you've got a limited character count. Um, but test, uh, text posts do work well, so experiment with those. Um, for example, you can ask people questions or run polls because Twitter is all about conversation. Asking questions is a great way to interact with your audience, show your organization's personality, and also gather feedback. Um, also have a clear call to action. So every time you tweet something, you think to yourself, what do I want people to do when they see this tweet? So tell your audience to comment on a post, ask them to follow you, ask them to sign up to do a nerdle hunt. Don't be shy, tell them what you want them to do. And uh, also tweet your campaign launches. So tweet about the Nerdle Hunt starting. It's a really good platform to launch these campaigns as it does have a really strong uh, hashtag platform, which is a really good way and easy way for other people to get involved. Um, but yeah, it's just, if you've got something new, share it. Up, oh, you've got an update, share it. If you've got something good and positive to share, put it on Twitter. Uh, next we have Instagram, which I like to think of as a magazine, because you'll see it's really, it's full of just inspiring pictures and videos. Um, it's best used is to share posts that are visually engaging. Um, so you'll see that quite a lot of people use it for like portraits and for beautiful things, landscapes, animals, Insta uh, Instagram influencers are on there. So, but you can make use of that too, so I'm sure you'll all have lots of stunning imagery and videos from being out on beaches that you can take advantage of. Uh, the quick tips here, optimi optimize your bio on your profile page. So it can be a really valuable tool so you can tell people who you are and include links to your website or blog. Uh, next, take advantage of stories and reels. Stories are a really popular type of content. Uh, the beauty of them is that there is no expectation for them to be overly polished. And you can make this content anytime, anywhere. So if you are out on a nerdle hunt, why not take pictures and videos of your team getting involved and share them? Um, and reels are also like a really good way of potentially reaching new audiences and being discovered. Uh, next, let your image do the talking. Don't be afraid to let posts and photos speak for themselves. A short headline of the image is enough, hopefully, to tell a really engaging story. And again, actively engage with other accounts. So reply to questions reply to people tagging you, get involved with your followers, um, and also reshare your followers and other organizations as well. Uh, share their posts to your stories uh, just for that extra boost of engagement. And it's a quick, easy win as well for you. You don't have to think too much about it. You can just share someone else's posts. Uh, next, we have LinkedIn, which is a business network. So this is for those of you who are more interested in connecting with journalists or politicians or other organizations. Um, my top tips for LinkedIn is to optimize your posts. So again, always try and include an image rather than just having text. Always inc include your clear call to actions, tag all the relevant people and pages, lead with questions to prompt more responses and get people talking, and always write a really strong headline. Next, you want to be relevant. Uh, to, so you need to get a better understanding of your audience first of, of all, and then post about what they care about. Um, try and avoid outbound links. Uh, LinkedIn doesn't want you going anywhere. So if you do want to include links uh, to a story, your blog, your website, pop it in the comments. Um, always encourage engagement. LinkedIn rewards engagement. So start conversations and reply to comments. And lastly, you don't have to be too robotic. You don't have to be too corporate. Uh, you don't have to be boring or too sciencey. You can just be authentic. You can be human, and that can be rewarding for you. 
And lastly, we have TikTok, which is the uh, entertainment platform. And I know Fidra has had some success on here with their videos, which are really, really great. Um, TikTok is more familial and inclusive and can be a really collaborative space that rewards optimism. Um, my top tips for TikTok is always start with a hook. It moves fast, so if you don't get them right away, people are just going to scroll right past you. So try and grab the viewer's attention right away. Always give people a reason to comment. Again, comment and getting more comments boosts your posts. Um, you can also make TikToks from comments. So the more comments you get, you might be inspired to uh, make something else. And the next slide, I'll show you an example of this. Um, something else that you should do is use trending sounds. If you're ever stuck in a rut or you don't know what to post, have a look on there and get inspiration from what other people are doing and um, see what's trending and what people are doing with them and try and make it work for your organization. And lastly, experiment. Social media is all about having fun and there's no recipe or algorithm for going viral. So just try everything and have fun with it and don't worry too much. Just have fun with it, honestly. Uh, so here's some examples from TikTok. So this is someone who is making a video and reply to a comment. He's also gamified his social media content. So he does beach cleans and he asks his followers to make a list of things that he should be on the lookout. And he went and made a video of him finding these. Uh, this one here, it starts off with this really beautiful shot and she's explaining what nerdles actually are in a really easy to understand, simple way. And it's got quite a lot of comments on social media. Jade, I think the videos are making you a bit crackly. Oh, are they? Sorry. Okay, I won't play them. Thank you for like jumping in and letting me know. <laughs> um, but yeah, the last one is just uh, someone showing how you can find nerdles. So if people okay they know what nerdles are, what's next? What shall they do on their nerdle hunt? Show people what they can do and um, how they can do it safely, what tools that they can use. And I'm sure most people have a sieve or a colander in the house. So encourage people to pick it up and go out there. Uh, Sorry that they went a bit crackly, the guy. Um, so here, uh, I'm wanting to spark some ideas for you for your content. Uh, but first of all, when you're coming up with content ideas, you remember to always have focus. What is your social purpose? What is your organizational goals? Is it to raise awareness for nerdle hunts? Stay focused on that. But you can also pick different themes within your uh, main overarching goal. So for example, good news, what good things have happened in the Nerdle Hunt, how many people are taking part, how many of people finding, um, you can do educational, tell people what Nerdles are, or it can be more generic beach cleans as well. So there's lots of different things you can do within that uh, overarching theme. Always keep in mind as well, interactions and to drive meaningful conversations. And again, have fun, because that's what social media is. People use it to escape and play and be entertained and look up cat videos and silly things. So make sure that it's fun at the end of the day as well and really entertaining as well as educational. Um, I'm going to just go quickly as well through some ideas that you can do for your organization that are really quick and easy. So one of the things that you can post about is who you are, what you do and where you do it. It's a great way to show that you're an expert in your field and it'll also help you gain some authenticity. And it's also essential information for your audience as well. Um, so it also includes updates on your projects uh, to give them all the information that they need. Uh, next, good news stories, which I really like. We do them a lot here at Postcode Lottery because who doesn't love a good news story? Something really positive on the internet. People like to read them. So uh, share positive uh, posts and updates about how your organization is making a difference and uh, also share how your contributors are helping towards your goals as well. Next, you can do meet the team posts. Uh, put a face to the name of some behind the scenes meet the team posts. These could be fun personal interviews with some of your volunteers or your staff um, and you can talk about the work that they've done for your organization. It's also a really good opportunity for showing you some personality as well. Um, and if you are looking for volunteers and more people to sign up for the Nerdle Hunt, let your audience know how they can get involved, where they can sign up, 
Um, and you should also encourage your existing volunteers or people that do nerdle hunts to share their stories on their own personal social media, get them to tag you in it. It's a way for you to potentially get even more followers from people. Next, always take advantage of videos. So here's an example from Fidra that they've done on their TikTok. Um, anywhere you can use video content, you should absolutely do so, as it is a really easy way for consuming information efficiently, and your audience will be able to retain a larger amount of the information that they get from a video. And the good thing is you don't really need any fancy equipment. If you've got a phone, use it. Some of the best social media content out there is being filmed on a phone. You don't really need anything else. Um, quick free benefits of using video. It grabs attention right away. It makes your audience feel something because you're telling a story and videos can evolve with you. So unlike a brochure that gets printed and becomes dated, a video can become edited and evolve and it saves money in the long run, which is really vital for um, NGOs such as yourself. Also, you can do digital you know posts. Uh, one of the reasons people go on social media is to learn. So grab attention with some stats and figures to start a conversation. For example, did you know over 360 million tons of plastic was produced in 2021? I bet you all did because <laughs> you work with things like this. So turn that into a conversation starter and get people talking about the issue. This is my last slide. Don't worry, I'm not going to be talking for much longer. Uh, but here are my top tips for your strategy going forward. So as I kept saying, keep your key objectives in mind. Um, what are your goals and what do you want social media to achieve? Second of all, if you are going to do a social media strategy, make sure you define the team roles. I know that quite a lot of you won't have a dedicated social media person in your team, um, but if you are going to be doing social media, make sure that you know who's going to be doing it, what they're going to be posting and what they're working on. A content calendar or editorial calendar can really help with this. It can help you establish a schedule for when you're posting and who is posting so that you can keep on top of it. Um, next, you should define your voice. Um, so define how you're going to talk to people on social media. It's very different depending on which channel that you're using. So how you talk to people on Instagram won't necessarily be how you talk to people on LinkedIn. And lastly, always report on what you're doing. Report on your successes and celebrate them and check in on your stats and let your team know how good your social media is doing and then you can all celebrate your successes. And that's me guys, uh, I hope you enjoyed that. And uh, I hope you learned a lot. Sorry, it was really quick, but um, as I say, if you do have any questions, you can send them to Jamie and Heather and I can help go into them. Any details further? Thank you. Thank you, Jane. That was fantastic. And um, I think it's really helpful to hear from, you know, a social media professional who does this all day, every day, and that even you were saying you can't do everything. So that's really, really good to hear and that we need to just pick our goals and then pick which channels work for us and be really clear on that. So thank you for that advice. No, that's good. I think it's really important because you can't do everything. You can only do what you can. So I hope don't get overwhelmed, people. <laughs> that's fantastic. OK, we'll be. Um, oh, so sorry. We'll be moving on to uh, Carolina now. And Caroline is going to share her slides and we will get started in a moment. Okay. Yeah. That's come up now. Do you see? Yeah. Okay, good. Thank you. So, hi, everyone. Uh, good morning or good afternoon <laughs> or good evening. So, my name is Carolina, and today I am presenting the Sea Shepherd Australia Marine Debris Campaign. And we are going to talk about the social media, how does the social media helps us uh, in our work. So, first of all, um, before we kick off, I would like to acknowledge the traditional custodians upon those slender lands we live and work. 
We pay respect to their elders past, present and emerging and acknowledge the continuing connection that Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples have to the land, sea, sky and waterways. So as I mentioned, uh, I'm coming from the Sea Shepherd Australia Marine Debris Campaign and would like first of all to introduce what are we doing and what work do we do and how do we are, are we relating with the Nettle Huts and the social media. So uh, we are the direct action campaign conducting the community beach cleanups monthly and also doing some remote cleanups uh, with our campaigners and the volunteers. The organization is a non-profit organization run by volunteers and we do have over 15 teams across Australia who are conducting the community cleanups monthly in every state. So from the 2015, we have done over 1,100 community cleanups and we have removed over 4 million and 500,000 pieces of trash from this iconic Australian coastline. So this is just an amazing result what the campaign has done in the past years. And as you see over here on the top five items collected in 2023, the first one is in nettles. So yes, we do have also the nettle hunts here in Australia. So let's talk about the nettle hunts very shortly. So Marine Debris Campaign started nettle hunts in 2019 when they conducted the first community involved great nettle hunt cleanup here in Perth. And after that, we start doing more and more nettle hunts with the communities and with our volunteers. In 2021, uh, we have established a new initiative. It's called March as in Adult Hunt. It's more as a citizen scientist project for individuals and also our teams across Australia uh, conducting the community cleanups with the Nadal Hunts, a part of our education, also a part of the data uh, collection. And as, we, as you know, we are always also sharing the data with the Great Nurdle Hunt to communicate about the Nurdle problem in Australia and the world wide. So in this uh, map, you will see our hotspots here in Australia of the Nurdles. So we have found Nurdles on the river banks, uh, on the beaches, and uh, unfortunately also in the small remote areas as the Cocos Killing Island and the Christmas Island during our remote cleanups. As I mentioned, so our uh, organization all is run by volunteers and the main our uh, work what we do is a direct action community cleanups on the ground. So that to engage with the communities and to involve these people to our cleanups, we need some tools and the platforms to work. Uh, the newspapers are not working anymore, unfortunately. So we are putting all our efforts and lots of work in the social media to engage with the communities, to in invite them to come to our uh, community cleanups. So we do uh, use two platforms for the Marine Debris campaign as a Facebook and the Instagram. They are also very different platforms, but also you can post the same post that what we are doing over here. So first of all, that's to engage with the communities and to give them information about our upcoming events. We are creating every event on the Facebook platform and sending the invitations to our supporters, to the followers and sharing the events as much as possible that everybody could see where the event is happening, what kind of event, when to come, what to bring, and just to have that all the information. So event is, events are really very big part of our campaign. Another thing, what we are posting also on our social media, so it's the educational post or facts. So it's more as education or the uh, awareness about the problem what we are talking. So let's say about the nurdles, what are the nurdles, what, uh, how do they leak in the environment or any other post that would give more information for the people to understand about the nurdles. We also love to share the website links or the breaking news stories. So if uh, anyway in Dubai there is a big spill of the nurdles, so we will definitely share this uh, the story and we would love our supporters also to know what's happening all around the world. Instagram, as I mentioned, this works a little bit different, but the posts can be similar. We are also using the same educational posts with the facts on the Instagram that also to engage with the people and to, to educate them. Another thing is what on Instagram works really well is the stories with the different questions, with the facts, and you can create lots of engagement on the stories. You can use lots of emojis uh, and also to show the people what are you doing or what you like and, 
and to ask them questions that they can answer you and after you can show also the results. The stories is really popular and I would encourage uh, organizations to use it more and more. Also on your stories, as Jade mentioned, also you can reshare from other organizations. So you can share from the Great Nerdle Hunt, you can share from the other organization also the post that uh, can help you to engage. Another thing is also tagging other organizations or tagging um, some other individuals that say what, what you choose in your organization. It also helps for your reach. Uh, Instagram is very popular for the reels and the short videos to share. So you, it, the reels are working really well because uh, I think that uh, more and more people are start uh, looking to the videos or watching the videos when just reading the post. And the long post on the Instagram, they do not work well. So it's easier, just a short snap uh, caption and the reel that would show exactly what you were doing. I would probably recommend to create the reels not longer than one minute. Uh, and, and that's, that would be just like a optimal uh, size and the long of, of your reel. Another thing what uh, we have seen that it works uh, well, it's the carousel of the graphics. So if you have few different graphics as I have, Put it over here so share um, share one idea in the three different graphics and let the people know that they need to swipe to the side or like to go up and down so that's something that is also works well to use the people on the ground by direct action or to use the kids uh, pictures on the social media i would really encourage because it works well oh, sorry Yes. Uh, over here, uh, I have chosen a few of the examples what also worked well on our social media. As probably you know, Sea Shepherd is all about the marine life. So we are all, always trying to uh, tie our post together uh, with the marine life and to show the impact that, let's say, the nurdles does for the marine life. So as you see in the first post, uh, we have a nurdles in the water and asking the question for the people like, how can the fish see the difference between the nettles and the fish eggs? Or how the turtles can see the difference? We're using also emojis to, uh, to show our expressions or our emotions, or just, uh, ju just to show the marine life also in the post. Um, to show the uh, size of the nettles, let's say using your fingers or using a hand, using some other obstacles around, I think it's also important because lots of people, they do not understand how small they are and how the, how danger they can be using as i mentioned kids and the the people on direct action is really also good and important because who doesn't like to see their faces on the social media everybody does and uh, try to make them nice and smiling and uh, to, to post the best uh, in action pictures i think is really great because people can reshare them and they are also uh, uh, making more engagement with the other their friends and the families that they are bringing back to your page these people uh, also i have chosen the picture the one with the sif and the gloves and the jar so it's just something that we were you we are using to when we are asking people to come to our nerdle hunts to show them what to bring it's just sometimes they do not want to read the post so i think the visual post is really the graphic, the visual graphic really gives more information and they're just, oh yeah, I need to take some massive. Oh, that, that's a good, uh, good thing for nerdles. So it's something that also engaging, uh, uh, engaging with the people. Try to use more brighter pictures. Try to use more, let's say, on the sand or the beach where the people love to be and where the people feel comfortable and relaxed. So they will always engage much more to the, to the picture. As I mentioned, yes, we are using a lot of uh, marine life in our graphics and in, in also in our post. That's something when you create your educational graphics also just think about your goals about your organization and what are you doing and how you can show, let's say, the baby turtle and the pre-production plastic pellets. As Jade also mentioned, uh, communicate through the post to your to your audience it's really great to ask the questions or to ask them to share their own opinion on the comments below and uh, or even to share with their their pictures or to tag your, your your organization in their post on the social media that you would see also what the people are doing it's really great when uh, when uh, when you ask this uh, these questions so the people are staying engagement with your post and they learn a little bit more or they see also other people what they are doing so uh for for here is, there is an example that uh, we have uh, asked for the people to share uh, 
what art they can do with the needles and uh, one of our supporters here in Perth she has done this job with the beautiful whale tail so it's uh, it's really nice and here it's also one of my first nettle hunt that I have done uh, with, with our team here in Perth. So it's really great to show the happy people and uh, also the team picture and the effort what the people are doing on, uh, uh, on your events. So let's say for us it's more like we are talking about the results, how many pieces we have removed or how many nettles uh, we, uh, we have found and the locations, how many people attended and uh, what we can do different. So it's, it's important also to, to show for the people what they have done. Uh, talking about the reels, so I have here one really great reel that we have done this year after our Earth and Earth hunt um, in March. And this reel uh, got the biggest engagement on the social media or on the Instagram and the Facebook. So um, uh, I will just play it now. volunteers and members of the general public remove thousands of nettles from across the country. Nettles are the building blocks to everyday plastic items and they pose a huge threat to our precious marine life. It's hard to remove them from the environment and they are not recyclable. We need change on the global level to protect marine life from these toxic pre-production plastic pellets. So I, I would definitely recommend to keep it short, sweet, and the key messages, uh, what you want to say about your, let's say, event. For us, it was a nettle hunt. We wanted to show, to show the impact and the amount of the nettles and the people on the ground on our direct action, what they are doing. So that's it from me today. And uh, if you want to know more about our work, what we are doing, so please, uh, Check the seashepherdaustralia.org.au. You will find also our latest news from the Nettle Hunt and follow us on Facebook on and Instagram. Thank you, Carolina. That was uh, fantastic. And there were so many good ideas and hints and tips in there. And I, uh, what you were saying about including images of the wildlife affected definitely worked. As soon as I saw those baby turtles, my heart was breaking thinking of them <laughs> in the environment. Um, no, that's amazing. Thank you. Um, it's, great. it's great to see so many of you putting your links um, to your social media channels in the chat. Please keep doing that and we can all follow each other, which is one of the bits of advice that we've had. So let's start doing that right now. That's fantastic. Um, I have a couple of questions myself and I think Danny and Jamie will just monitor the chat for me and let me know if there's any questions coming through online. But just to get us started, um, I want to ask um, both of you, both Jade and Carolina, like if someone is pretty new to social media, what would be a good first step? Which channel would you pick or what type of, type of content would you focus on? Um, I'll come to you first, Jade. So if you're just getting started out with social media, I would say that you've got to ask yourself quite a few questions. So first of all, define who your audience is, is really important. So who do you want to talk to? Who do you want to attract? Because um, you, you also need to think about age, gender, their interests. So I'm assuming you want... No, don't, 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 don't you just focus on young people, but say you are, are wanting to focus on young people who are really into volunteering. Um, so you'll, that'll help you pick what channels that you want to be on. So maybe start off with just like those one couple of channels so you don't overwhelm yourself. And then think about what it is that you're actually wanting to do. Um, I would also suggest when you're first starting out is to keep a calendar or a content calendar so that you remember to post consistently because it is quite easy. I'm guilty of it myself of starting lots of different social media channels for like lots of different interests and then just not posting to them because it's really hard to keep on track of it. So if you do have a calendar, that'll help you keep posting consistently. And I would also suggest like you're doing now, connect with people who are similar to you, people of similar interests, similar organizations, and interact on their posts. Uh, and hopefully you'll see that reciprocated for yourself. And for the type of content when you're first starting off, let people know who you are, do videos, try new things, and hopefully that'll get you started. Thanks, Jade. Carolina, have you got any suggestions for someone just getting started? 
I think Jade has covered uh, quite a, quite a lot already, but it's, yes, it's it's. I think it's really important to have a strategy and your key messages for your social media. And yes, when you have your audience, so you know what you are talking, and just don't jump from one to to another post. Like uh, you know, just keep 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 that uh, the going and keep doing what and show your job, show the people, show the like community what we, what you are doing or with who you are doing. You know, that. so I, I think it's. Uh, it's it's important these uh, these things. So. Thank you. Um, I also wanted to ask you, Carolina, about um, how you. Lots of organisations don't just work on nerdle hunts; they work on lots of different topics. So, how do you manage that? Do you like focus on it in March? It's all nerdles, or do you do a bit on nerdles through the year? How do you approach it? Uh, so over here in Sea Shepherd Australia Marine Debris Company, yes, we do have like two years a bigger initiative. So when you are hosting your uh, global great nurdle hunt, so we are having also the community cleanups and we do the early nurdle hunt in March. Uh, so we uh, we are doing together with the beach cleanup. So it's not just nurdle hunts, it's we, we do both. Uh, uh, so we are in, inviting the people to come for the picking up the rubbish and to hunt the nurdles. So it, we we just we tried the both ways. We tried also just an adult hunt and just the beach cleanup. So and we see that it works better when it's uh, when they are both together. So we try always like to talk more, uh, especially also our marine debris coordinators uh, during the safety briefing. They are always mentioning like about the nettles and what are we doing today because. We are fighting against the plastic pollution and the nettle is something that it's so small and it's a, the pre-production plastic for for the plastic so it's really important that the people would understand like from where it starts and where it, like middle or where it ends so we tried uh, to to work like with both together and and these educational talks about the nettles we do mostly on every hour beach cleanup mm -hmm. That makes sense. I can see that working really well. And I thought the your tips for always showing the scale of these things, because I'm always surprised at how many people don't realise what they are or haven't come across them before, even if they've been beach cleaning for years. Yeah. Yeah, we do have them on display, even like an adults, we keep it always on every beach cleanup, we have them on the display and the people just come, takes a jar and you start the conversation and you, you, you start the data education point. Yeah, that's a really good point. Um, have we had any questions coming through on the chat? Uh, nothing in the chat so far, guys, so be sure to add anything in there. Um, I have a question. There has been one question, sorry. Oh, oh sorry. Sorry, I missed that yeah. one. So, um, Savila, Sabi, I'm sorry if I've said your name wrong, asked, is there any news updates on what's happening might happen with Twitter? And is there an existing replacement or other channels that might take over? So it's quite probably quite a difficult question. Um, but Jade, is that something you might be able to answer? I I hope I can answer it for you. I can do more research. Like I say, I'm going to do like a wee FAQs for you when you get sent a link to this. Uh, Twitter, I feel like I keep up to date with all the time that's constantly changing, but for now, I don't think it's going anywhere. So I think you can definitely still take advantage of it. I mean, you don't have to buy the Twitter Blue subscriptions or do anything like that. Um, in terms of replacements, I think people are trying to replace it. So the old um, CEO of Twitter, Jack Dorsey, has created something called Blue Sky, I think it's called, but that's in beta. Uh, there's quite a lot of uh, organizations or normal people, I guess, just general public are moving to something called Mastodon, which is more like open servers. So there you, I'm pretty sure you'll be able to find um, communities of people who have similar interests. And I know here, in my organization and a lot of people are talking about Discord, which was originally, I think, for mostly gamers, but there's more and more people are going to Discord now. And there you're going to be finding more closed groups, but with more engaged people. So I'm pretty sure you'll find ecological groups or people that are really into going to the beach. So maybe that's something that you can maybe consider on an in, in individual basis is to check out what conversations are maybe happening on Macedon and Discord and getting in touch with people on a more personal level that isn't as public as say Twitter is. I hope that helps. I will try to do more research for you and keep you up to date with Twitter. Now that sounds great. Is anyone in the chat by any chance on Discord or doing any of what Jay's mentioned already and have got some insight? We'll keep a look out for that. <laughs> 
But yeah, Jamie, you had a question. Oh, I've just got another one coming in, oh, uh, which uh, from uh, Avon. I, I hope I'm saying your name right. And it is, uh, would you recommend creating accounts on platforms we are not actively using uh, to make sure others don't take our handle? So the Mastodon and TikTok is examples of platforms that um, he'll don't have capacity for, but might in the future. I would say yes, do that. Um, we do that as an organisation. Uh, so we're not allowed to be on TikTok, but we still take the handle for it. For us, it's mostly to stop scammers or impersonations. Um, so if you do, there's not there's nothing wrong with just keeping an idle account um, that you're not going to do anything that's not got any followers. So yeah, if you want to take your handles, make sure you get in there. So if in the future you can do it, it's already there for you. If you, if you were to make a handle, would you just put links to your actual active social medias then? Is that what you'd recommend? You can do that, yeah. You can put that in the bio. Mm -hmm. That's a good idea, yeah. Mm -hmm. Someone asked as well, is YouTube still a relevant channel? Um, we personally post all our webinars on YouTube. Um, and I believe both Jade and Carolina have used YouTube a lot. So I don't know if either of you want to talk about if, if it's still relevant for content. I think the YouTube is good working for the longer videos. If if you have some, you know, not like a reels that just very short and the one minute, but if you have a longer videos from your campaigns or that you want to show more or even as a webinar. So I think it's still a great tool and it's easy to share the link from the YouTube to on your social media to copy paste. So that's something that also relates together. So I think it's it's still a very great tool, the YouTube, and also you can find lots of information there. Would you agree with that, Jay? I yeah, that. I feel like sometimes I'm biased though, because I watch more YouTube than television. I still think YouTube is quite relevant. And you're probably, I don't know if any of you have seen, but TikTok's really huge, but quite a lot of TikTokers and content creators are posting what they're making on TikTok onto YouTube, because YouTube, YouTube do YouTube shorts now. So they're gaining a lot of popularity and followers on there. So it's definitely something to keep in mind um, and not dismiss. Well, that's good because we'll be putting this webinar on YouTube. <laughs> I'm glad we came to that conclusion. Um, that's fantastic. So uh, we've just got a couple more minutes for questions. So do get them in if you have them. Uh, in the meantime, I wanted to sort of find out. So the Great Nerdle Hunt, uh, the Great Global Nerdle Hunt this year is happening for the month of October. Um, I wanted to get your thoughts on when should you start promoting that? Should we be starting now? Should we be starting um, in September? Should we be starting in August? When should we start um, be talking about nerdles and, and getting people ready for the great global nerdle hunt? Jade, I'll come to you first. I think there's no harm in starting now. So say you're trying to target someone who's a complete newbie to this like I was last year. Maybe now you can start telling people what nerdles are because you don't want to get to October and ask people to volunteer and they're like, I don't know anything about this, this issue. So I say there's no, like you don't have to stick to just a specific month. You can do content throughout the year that's really easy to do. So now you can start telling people this is what to expect. People are going to the beaches as well, it's summer. So maybe you can do who's going to the beach this summer and do content around people visiting beaches and keep an eye out, here's what they are. And then that will hopefully get it in people's minds in time. And then before October, you can start getting people interested in signing up. Yeah, yeah. No, that's a good point. In, in the Northern Hemisphere, it's summer. In, oh, yeah, sorry. Summer. <laughs> I always assume that it's summer all year round in the Southern Hemisphere. Um, <laughs> I think it's really important to think of seasons and what's going on in the world, what trends are happening. That's really important for informing the content that you do so in the northern hemisphere being summer people are at beaches think nerdles yeah and then that's the great thing about the nerdle hunt as well is even though we have the great global nerdle hunt for a month in october where we're really trying to focus efforts you can do a nerdle hunt anytime you go to the beach or to a river or anytime you see a nerdle so it's not restricted but i guess there's no harm starting early and building up a following beforehand Absolutely not. Like for our campaigns, we always do teasers beforehand as well, like in the months coming up. So even if it's just like little snippets of something that's coming up, and that is really good way of 
getting excitement from people. For us, teasers actually work better sometimes in our actual campaign. People like to get a wee snippet of something or be excited. So yeah, test out. Is that what you do as well, Caroline? Do you start early and talk about the issues in between your big months of March and October? Yeah, we try, of course, as, as early as possible to try to speak what's coming up or any initiatives that we, we would host. And it's really good, as uh, Jay told about tweezers and everything. Also, it's a good, for example, to share your last year report and to say, oh, oh this, the, this is the results we got. Are you keen for this year? And just, just to try to get engagement from the people, I think it's, it's, uh, it's important and, and it's good. The sooner you start, uh, just the bigger reach you get. Great, thank you. Um, I'm going to just check if there's any final questions and then um, we'll start thinking about closing the meeting and I'll pass to Danny. So are there any final questions come through? I don't believe I can see any that have come through from the last minute ones. Okay. So if you do have any more, I think like we say, put them in the chat and we'll, we can follow up on them. So, um, or let us know after the meeting, you can send me an email if you have any last questions. I'll put my email address in the chat there. Great. Okay. Well, thank you for, for the questions and for adding those channels to the chat. Um, I'm just going to pass over to my colleague, Danny, and she's going to give you a couple of updates just to close up this webinar. Thanks. Hi, everyone. So, yeah, I just thought I'd, um, uh, there's a lot of new people uh, in our audience today. So I just thought I'd give an overview. Uh, the Nerd Hunt started in 2013 and um, really, what happened was uh, the founders of FIDRA noticed that plastic pellets were all over the Firth of Forth, which is where we're based in Scotland. Um, and they started to question, what were they? Why were they here? And are there anywhere else? So that was really this catalyst for the community science project, the Great Global Nerdle Hunt. Um, so as you can see from 2013 till now, we have this huge map of data collected. And on that uh, map, even if you don't find an hurdle, if you do an hurdle hunt, we record that too. And um, every year we provide um, big resource packs that explain um, like a nerdle hunt briefing, of why you want to nerdle hunt, a social media toolkit, which has lots of infographics, um, lots of hashtags, lots of statements that you can share online, how you can get people to engage in your social media campaign. And um, we also have a how to do a Nerdle Hunt um, booklet that we share with our NGOs just so that they can get involved and start their own campaign. So that'll be coming out in the next couple of months. Uh, but right now, what's happening is we are organizing our next webinar, which is how to Nerdle Hunt, which will give um, newer uh, Nerdle Hunters, perhaps uh, uh, the catalyst to get involved in this campaign. We also have coming out, hopefully, um, next month, the end of next month, our 10 years of Nerdle Hunting report. Um, we're going to start bringing out snippets of that um, and building on um, the fact that we've had 10 years of incredible organisations and volunteers um, involved in Nerdle Hunting. Uh, so we really want to showcase that. Um, in the build-up to uh, the, this year's Great Global Nerd Hunt, which is in October, which has been on all the um, presentation slides. And then also, at the end of next month, we do have uh, a Global Plastic Pellet Supply Chain Report coming out. We've been working really closely with um, Oracle and Environmental Experts, um, and they're a consultancy to help us map the global scale of the supply chain. Um, and how that might be affecting you. So um, within that, there'll be lots of uh, support and information for other NGOs to understand the global plastic pollution, as well as the regional plastic pollution and the scale of that. So if anyone is interested in learning more about that, please do get in touch with us uh, at info at fidger.org.uk. Um, and then just really quickly, if you'll let me exit this, I thought I'd show people the um, Nerdle Hub. Um, hopefully, Jamie will throw a wee <laughs> a link in. But within that, we have a whole section on education campaigns and raising awareness. So even if you aren't uh, actively involved in a Nerdle Hunt campaign at the moment, but you are trying to engage people with the plastic pellet issue or any plastic issue, we have information on how to engage with the public, how to engage with policymakers, the messages that you want to share. Um, we have a, a section about how to use Nerdle data, uh, campaign 
like campaign raising awareness, as well as storytelling to communicate your messages. Um, this webinar will also be shared in this area of the hub. Um, and if you click on to the campaign to raise awareness, down with it, it has actual resources that you can click on, including last year's organization pack to effectively run a nerdle hunt. So you can have a look at uh, the type of thing that we'll be sharing uh, closer to the nerdle hunt this year. Uh, so yeah, that's me. Thanks so much, everyone who's uh, come today. And I'll just pass back to Heather. Thanks for that, Danny. So that nerdle hub is available to all NGOs free of charge, isn't it? All those resources are there. And that's yeah, absolutely. And you can register your organization there. So you can connect with other organizations. Um, oh, Carolina has done that herself um, for their organization. So thank you. You can add all your social medias on there, can't you? So everyone can start following each other. So we can. Yeah. It's, a, it's yeah. a really useful tool and it's starting to get used now. We launched it at the beginning of this year um, and we're starting to see that people are able to use the resources. But if you go on and you think there's something missing, let us know. Um, and we we can we're either actively working on it already or we can start. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's great to have that dedicated site for NGOs who are actually doing the behind the scenes work, but separate to our Nerdle Hunt site, which is more for the public to log their finds. So this is kind of all for you. So please let us know what you want on there. Or if you've got resources that you want to share on there, you know, there's some great things up there already. Mm -hmm. OK, well, that brings us to the end. We're right on time, amazingly. So thank you for that. I think there was one or two questions we didn't get round to, so we'll make sure that those get answered um, either in an FAQ or by email. So thank you for joining us. Thank you to our speakers, Jade and Carolina. You've given us lots of inspiration and uh, so have all of you for sharing all your channels as well. So that's fantastic. Um, I'll just say thank you for coming and um, we'll get the recording out to you uh, before the end of the week. So if there's anything you've missed, you'll have the chance to look at it again. Yeah, I just wanted to say as well, Heather, I just forgot, um, is that we have a survey that um, has been put into the chat and it's just to give us feedback so we can make sure that the next webinar or even the content that Jade and Carolina share um, afterwards um, is included. So if you can give us feedback, um, on this session or what's been missing or what you're hoping for. It might already be getting covered in the next webinar or in a future webinar, but um, we'd really love to make sure we involve everything and we make these webinars for you. Brilliant. Okay, great. So do your survey, follow everybody else on social media, get nerdle hunting. <laughs> so we better leave it there because we've all got a lot to do, haven't we? <laughs> all right. Thanks ever so much. And we'll see you hopefully at the next webinar.